What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of bromance. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Miss your face. Miss your face. Yeah. Sean, I'm going to take you back to your childhood today. Ooh, all right. What was back in my childhood? I was going to say, I don't, I, this, this might be your childhood. It might not be. I don't know. Were you, okay. So were you a big fan of Barney the Dinosaur? Uh, that was just like right on the edge of my childhood. So like when it came out, I was kind of like just getting out of those kind of shows. I had a, a family member who really, really liked Barney. And I remember at one point, there was a story about Barney getting the shit kicked out of him, like at some like <laughs> mall. And I, I told her about it, and my grandpa got mad at me. He's like, well, what if I told you Santa Claus got beat up? And I was like, Santa Claus can't get beat up because he's in the North Pole. Ah, nobody's going to go to the North Pole and beat Santa. Yeah, Grandpa. It's too cold. Yeah, Grandpa doesn't talk to me anymore. Yeah, what do you know, old man? <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that the dinosaur could rip your family apart, Sean. Yeah, we haven't talked for ages. It's sad. I know. All because of that fucking purple dinosaur. <laughs> well, Sean, it's about it's about things are about to get weird. I myself, I had three little sisters, and all three of them loved Barney the dinosaur. Uh, I couldn't get into it at all. Like even like watching it, just like something about it screamed like creepy. Like they watched the show, they had videos. Oh, did they have the stuffed animal, the stuffed Barney? Yes, 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 they did. And they had, oh my god, they'd have they'd put those damn cassettes on repeat. Yeah, you can. Everybody knows the song. I love you. You love me. We're a happy family. Go and kill your family, cause we're the only one. <laughs> Who will love you better than none? <laughs> I think that's how it went. Yeah, that's that's totally all it. I know is I think Barney was a cult. That's what I'm kidding. At. <laughs> well, Sean, I I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's in our best interest, and I think it's in I think it's in the public's best interest if we do kind of a like where are they now? Oh yeah yeah. Of all, like, the childhood, like, oh, are we going to see, like, where Doug Funny is now? Like, what happened to Doug Funny? <laughs> what did happen to Doug Funny? Well. And did he ever own a different outfit? No, he didn't. But he found out that Patty Mayonnaise was actually a lesbian and it tore him apart. She, you know what? I, I could totally see that coming. Yeah. Did you? Oh, yeah. Could you not? Because she's like, oh, Doug, we're just friends. She's like, uh, you don't play the same game that I do. Yeah. Oh, Doug, I think I think I'm on a different team. I know. I don't ever understand that. No, Doug. I mean, I'm on a different <laughs> Doug, team. Doug, we eat the same food, if you get what I'm saying. I don't get it. That, that's the problem, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about vagina, Doug. I like the purple girl, not you. <laughs> she was purple, right? Am I wrong? Are you talking about Skeeter? No, Skeeter was like... Aquamarine. Oh or like yeah. Something oh, like that's kinda... right. He's like green. I don't remember the purple girl. Who was who was the ri- who was the rich girl? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's either. been a, it's been a minute since I've seen that show. <laughs> you know what we should do? Oh my god. Okay, new idea for a podcast. <laughs> you ready for this? New idea for a podcast. We take shows from our childhood and we do like a uh, like a twenty years later segment, like a where are they now segment, a spoof interview. Yeah, I like that idea. Like, do like do like one episode, or you do it in seasons. You like you do like you know Doug one one se- one season, and do like five or six episodes. Then you do Rocco's Modern Life. You do like five or six episodes. You do like Saved by the Bell. Oh wait, there he did that. Yeah, and everybody kind of worked out except Screech. Yeah, he kind of went a little crazy. Jesse was in the movie. He took her clothes off. She did. Yeah, ruined her career. She was on the upward, you know. It's like, all right, Jesse Spano. Now Saved by the bell. <laughs> this is my ticket to start. <laughs> Hitch my wagon to this fucking moving train. Uh, Fresh Prince pulled out okay. I think all of them are pretty, uh, like, not crazy. You know, that's a good point. You know why? Uncle Phil. Oh, rip Uncle Phil. Yeah, missed that guy. He was my shredder. Was he your shredder? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was my shredder too, now that I think about it. He was the one that I remember. Oh, Dad, 
Battles. That was pretty good. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Barney. We're going to talk about Barney. We're going to talk about where Barney is now. Where is Barney? So you're talking about like the actual dinosaur? Because they still have the show, I think, don't they? Well, they have like Barney the Next Mutation. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> where Barney's like going from town to town, destroying like these buildings. That little triceratops. Oh. I thought like Zilla's back and that's what he does. He destroys buildings. And now he's got like now he's got friends. He's got friends. He's got Mothra and uh uh the big fucking bird, Rodan, and the three headed dragon, King Ghidorah. Ooh. I, I can't wait for that movie. That's that comes out next year, right? I think next year. It looks badass. That was one of the few things that was one of the one of the one of the things that got me like super hyped on Comic Con. But we talked about that. God damn it, Sean. Okay, Barney. Barney. Focus. Focus with me on Barney. <laughs> that's that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh, oh. It's hard to, to not want to bury the lead on this. Okay, so the guy who played Barney, and, I, and, and as I read on, you'll figure out if it's the guy in the suit or the guy that did the voice. Okay. Okay. Which I guess I didn't realize could be two different people, but definitely could be two different people. Definitely could be two different people. He now runs a business. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. You know, you can only either do the voice for so long or you can only do the, uh, you know, sitting in that suit for so long. Well, yeah, be acrobatic in that suit. I don't know if you, I don't know. Well, I mean, I seemed like you watched the show a little bit, but like he was jumping around and doing all sorts of shit in that suit. I mean, he was just jumping and waving his arms, wasn't he? It was on a studio set. Like it was air conditioned. Well, yeah, but you got to be somewhat athletic to put on a big, giant foam suit and uh, hop around like you're in gymnastics. I don't know. I don't hop think around like bad. you're a member of the pep squad. You know, you get to like accidentally whip your tail around, knock some of those kids down. It'd be worth it. You know, that one that gets mouthy, like thinks they're going to be like the next Zach Morris. I think you're stupid. And I want to put on that suit. <laughs> Come here, little Tommy. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop. What happened to Tommy? He fell down and broke his ankle. Oh. Remember, kids, that's why you don't mouth Barney, you silly motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to hitch the wagon to Barney, star? <laughs> <laughs> now sing the song. Sing the song. <laughs> I love you. I'm jerking off in this suit right now. <laughs> While they're singing the song, there's just one arm that's limp. Kids are crying. Parents are like, why? I don't, actually, the parents are like, I don't care that we're hitching our ride to Barney. Right? Want some of that sweet Barney money? People are terrible. Yeah, what do you think? I had kids to be a parent? Pfft, that's my retirement fund right there. I need there. a meal ticket. That's what I'm looking for. So, Sean, the business he runs, he runs, Barney runs, a tantric sex business. Okay, tantric sex business. What is that? Explain that to me. I don't know. What it, I know, like, I know there's a band called Tantric from, like, the 2000s that had, like, two good songs. Yeah. But what do they have to do with sex business? Okay, so what tantric, I don't, I don't know if you've ever experienced tantric sex. Tantric sex has a lot to deal with. Um, it's, it's kind of combining uh, the concepts and philosophies of yoga with okay um with physical intimacy so you have energy you are um you can harness and put out your sexual energy yeah. and also direct it into 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 certain into certain things it's usually done with massage gotcha richard i'm gonna say this if like my wife and i do tantric sex and i'm in downward dog like i don't think that's gonna get the mood going no Maybe. You don't know. No, I do, because I tried it. <laughs> like, babe, let's do new yoga. <laughs> Look, downward dog's like, uh, ooh, oh, babe, what's wrong? International Women's Day. <laughs> what's wrong, babe? Why you, ooh, nothing. <laughs> Why is it so, oh, Harry, oh, God. He started his current practice in 2004 and finds clients any number of ways, from word of mouth to converting women he's met on Tinder into believers. Was Tinder around in 2004? Or is that his newer thing? No, it's he's, they're saying he started in 2004, oh, but like this is the types of ways he gets people to follow. Him. Damn, he's made that run longer than Barney. I think 2004 Barney had been on for like 10 years, something like that. Yeah. So a full session 
with a tantric massage specialist and spiritual healer, healer David Joyner, lasts three to four hours Damn. and costs three hundred and fifty dollars. That doesn't seem like a bad deal, especially if he. Well, we don't know yet, but if he talks in the Barney voice, totally worth it. <laughs> How would that sound? Well, now what you got to do is bend over. Let me rub your taint. <laughs> rub, rub, rub the taint. <laughs> For that price, for that price, female clients, which are the only kind he accepts. Oh, that. Oh, that's why I draw the line there. Yeah. Why? Why can't why can't they? Women, women like to get off, too, sometimes, Sean. (laughs) Not in my experience. (laughs) No, they they still they still would like to. No, I just think it's kind of like sexist. He's like, no, I only see women. Well, why? What's wrong with men? Well, look in the mirror. Ugh, I wouldn't touch that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't fuck me. That's for certain. Uh, for that price, female clients, which are the only kind he accepts, can accept to receive, ready, a ritual bath. Oh, okay. A chakra balancing and a massage. Mm. Also on the menu, cosmic mind-blowing orgasms. How's this legal? Like, I always try to figure out, like, you know, you, you're driving down the highway and you see those, like, sketchy massage parlors. Sketchy to who? Um, Not to me. <laughs> Which, you walk into one of those, like, I got a kink in my neck. And, like, the first thing they one do. One man's sketchy is another man's treasured place. <laughs> one man's weekly stop. Yeah. Uh, but. Like, I don't think that's legal, right? Like, you go to a massage parlor and, you know, the happy ending is like what they talk about. Which is what, this sounds like it's a female happy ending, right? Um, I think it's because you're, because it's done, it's done not in a, it's not done in a sense like, oh, you go to this dude and he's going to give you an orgasm. Or he's not, you're not paying him for sex. You're paying him to... It's almost like going to see a fortune teller. Well, no, uh, but like you go to the massage parlor, like you don't go there for the happy ending. It just happens. What massage parlors do you go to? Not the right ones, trust me, because whenever I take my pants off, like they kick me out. I've been banned (laughs) from like six massage parlors, Richard. Like, this is not like the movies at all. (laughs) It's a big barrel, but someday I'm going to find my fish. (laughs) I'll find my white whale. And it's a dude name. Barney, <laughs> but no, but how's that like? Because it's time it's, for your happy ending, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Sing the song. Sing it. What? <laughs> Sing it. Sing a fucking song. <laughs> oh, whoa! I love you. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use your tears as lube. <laughs> But no, but like that's so massage parlors can't do that, right? Like that's illegal. So they go through, they give yes, you the whole massage. Well, I, I you can't explicitly offer it. What does that mean? So like they have to do it off the clock. Well, they can't explicitly say you give me X amount of dollars and I'm going to give you these sexual things. But it, but but you just said that this guy offers three fifty for four to five hours and he guarantees mind blowing orgasm. Well, to be well, to be fair, it might also depend on where he's living. That's true. Okay, continue with the story then. Maybe maybe there's a maybe there's a Barney maybe there's a Barney cat house in the desert. I want to sidebar this because. I'm I've never really got a clear understanding if uh happy endings are legal or not. It seems like they shouldn't be. Um I believe they are because there is there is a massage parlor in the town that I live in that just last year got got busted for it. Oh okay, so it is illegal to do that. It's actually like 2 blocks from my house. <laughs> Or so I've read. When when uh, when we saw the article, and was like, "Isn't that the massage parlor you go to?" Nope, different one. Nope, totally different. It's the one next to it. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. There's a Papa John's next to it. Uh, I have an eating problem. I like pizza. Not. I rub happy it on ending. myself. That's my massage. Happy ending. I call it happy pepperoni. <laughs> Happy ending, I call cinnamon sticks. Okay, the, okay, the, the latter, referring to the orgasms, the latter can be achieved through massage alone, but the goal of a session is to fully release a woman's blocked energy. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Well, what's the difference between releasing my blocked energy? Because uh, dudes are gross. That's true. Dudes are pretty gross. It's not really so much that dudes are gross. It's just that dicks are weird. Like, have you ever, have you ever, like, okay, like, aside from the whole self-deprecating humor and, you know, the, 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 oh my God, I'm so horrible jokes. Like, have you ever, like, actually looked at your, looked at your fucking dick? Yeah, mine's pretty cute. No, it's not. (laughs) Have you seen mine? How do you know? It has a bow tie and everything. Do you want me to answer this question over the internet? Wait, have you seen it? You want me to answer this question over the internet? I don't care. Uh, let's table this for later. <laughs> let's table. We'll have this discussion later. Obviously, good, somebody's sir. uncomfortable with what they've seen. <laughs> You're like, I have seen it, Sean, and God damn it, it is cute. <laughs> no, it's not cute. Because mm. none of them are cute. Mine isn't cute. There's been, I like all dicks. Like dicks just look weird. Don't dicks look weird? Uh, I think dicks look weird. I think they all look weird. It's this dangling thing hanging from your fucking body. I think it's because there's not really much variety in them. They all kind of look the same. I think they all look weird. I think all dicks look weird. There's this... There's this... Uh, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember if it was a comic or if it was uh, it was on a TV show or something like that. But they had it like... It was Superman and Lois Lane. And Superman gets undressed and he has this like weird alien penis with like pincers on it and everything and Lois is like what the fuck is that and he's like what I'm an alien like what did you think (laughs) did you think I was gonna have like normal fucking junk like everybody else okay um when the lingram which is which is apparently a term for the word penis when the lingram and the yoni the yoni is the term for for the for the vagina so what is it again so the yoni's vagina the yoni's vagina, the lingam is the penis. Hmm. I think that's what we should just call it from now on, the lingam. How, Richard, is my lingam cute? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That makes it worse. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, how, I don't know how you did it, Sean, but you did it. Does you it roll it off the tongue as well? No. Because you got to kind of like, Stop lingam. It. Stop it. <laughs> Oh my god, the double entendres is real. You know, I thought of the two of us, you'd be more secure in your sexuality. I'm starting to question a I'm lot totally of things. I'm totally secure in my sexuality. My thing is, is that I think all dicks look weird. Yeah, well I think everything is special in its own way. Yeah, everybody's a fucking snowflake. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, there's when, so when the lingam and the yoni meet, there's a certain energy that takes place that hands on the body alone cannot create. So these are the words of, of David Joyner, who is 54, whose yogi like presence is often accompanied by a warm smile when we meet for the first of several interviews. He's like, I'm David Joyner, and I think my Ling Long needs to join your Yanni. <laughs> All I want to do is ding-a-ding-dang, my dang-a-long Ling Long. It's a ministry song. It's really good. Anyway, uh, even through G-Spot massage, it's still not the same energy that flows. Today, Joyner's tantric massage practice boasts he has 30 clients. Hmm. But he hasn't called them clients, Sean. You know what he calls them? Goddesses. Ah, Richard, I think we can learn some learn one thing from this dude. We need to start calling our wives goddesses and see what that gets us. Sean, I do every day. Do you really? Yeah. Are you lying? No. Okay. Especially after sex. Yeah. You're like, oh, you're a goddess. And she's like, <laughs> Don't wake me up. And then she's like, you are too, Steve. And I'm like, yeah, wait, what? (laughs) Wait, Steve's the guy at the massage parlor. (laughs) You said you didn't go there, you son of a bitch. (laughs) No, I was talking about Papa. Who else is your goddess? (laughs) Who else is calling you a goddess? Answer me. I'll sleep on the couch. So he has 30, he has 30 goddesses, as he calls them, and he unblocks the energy of two to four women a week. I mean, that makes sense. If, if, only, like, if there's 30 of them and they stop by once a week, I mean, that's, what, six weeks? So these chicks are kind of stopping in like once every month and a half. Exactly. Okay, let's, okay so do the math there. Uh, $350, two to four times a week, so that's... 
upwards of $1,400 a week. Yeah. So $1,400 a week. So could be as many as, as much as what? 70,000 a year. Yep. Yeah. Just right over 72. That's not bad, bad money. What was this job when like, uh, I was going through, uh, you know, the guidance council, like, all right, Sean, what do you want to do with your life? Like, I want to be a country music star. Yep. And then your mom's like, don't worry. He says that all the time. (laughs) And then you're like, mom, get out of this. This is my business. She's always doing that. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want me to hold your helmet? Yes. Hold my helmet. I want to go back in time. Be like, I want to be a tantric sex guru. Right. Okay. (laughs) What does that do? I don't know, but apparently it's legal. (laughs) (laughs) I'll move to the desert. I don't care. Yeah, see, that's the thing, Sean. Would you would you move to the middle of the Nevada desert if this was your life? Uh, yeah. Why not? Well, I think actually, isn't uh, male prostitution even le- uh, illegal there? I have no idea. I think male prostitution is completely illegal. I don't know the exact reason. I thought it had something to do with like what the hell, testing. man? That's a double standard. I know. I think gigolo gigoloing is illegal all over. I could be wrong. That's bullshit. Hashtag us two. I know, right? Well, I mean, honestly, Richard, like, look at us. It's the same thing. Like, <laughs> well, I want to be a gigolo. Me. It looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to listen to my podcast? <laughs> Did I release your energy? <laughs> you released something. So two to four women a week, he says, it's a tad different than his work as a, apparently he was a software analyst at Texas Instruments. A job he <laughs> So held. he worked on calculators and all the time he kept typing in boobies. Yeah, and he's like, hey, 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 Ralph, look, look. So I was analyzing the new T-1000, and uh, look, yeah, it's uh, that's a weird number. Yeah, but flip it upside down. God damn it, Joyner. <laughs> it says boobies. <laughs> it says boobs. <laughs> oh, oh, good times. Well, I got to go see HR. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I found my real calling. <laughs> And my first client. (laughs) So for six years, he worked as a software analyst um, and landed shortly after graduating from ITT Technical Institute. But Joyner says his current work in Tantra does share many similarities to another job he held from 1991 to 2001. So 10 years. Holy shit, Barney was on in 91. Yeah. Wow. From 1991 to 2001, he was Barney. All right. So this is where the spoiler alert comes in. So you said he was Barney. Was he the man in the suit or was he the voice? Um, that's what I'm, I was, I think he was the man in the suit, but I don't know if he was also the voice. I haven't, I haven't gotten that far. It looks like he's the... He was the person in the suit. The energy I brought up while in the costume is based on the foundation of Tantra, which is love. So he was practicing. Oh, my God, Sean, this shit's blowing my mind. He was practicing the 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 philosophy of Tantra while he was in the suit. So that whole joke I made earlier about him, like sticking his hand back in through the sleeve and jerking off while he's in the suit yeah. could have totally happened. I think that's something you keep to yourself. <laughs> well, he was keeping it to himself. True. I did. I just kind of did a little extra research. So he did physically portray Barney and Bob West was the one voicing it. And now Bob West is like, don't you fuckers bring my name into this. I still got a gig. Damn it. I still want to do the voice. I don't, I have no goddesses. All I have is Doris. <laughs> Fuck you, Bob. Oh, Bob was, uh, he was in Chuck E. Cheese, too. He did some of the voices. Not really anything of note, just kind of interesting. Everything stems, grows, and evolves from love. Even when you have emotionally blocked energy, the best way to remove it is to remove it with love and then replace it with God's divine love. Love heals and allows you to continue to grow. What's love got to do, got to do with it? Apparently everything, this dude. Everything, according to David Joyner. He's like, you could save the world with love. 
if you just release that blocked energy. Yeah. Uh, Barney, of course, radiated pure, joyful love. It was part of what children, still full of innocence, found so appealing about him. And it's what many parents, beaten down to various degrees by the sobering realities of the world, found so goddamn cloying. Joyner gave expression to that love through his physical portrayal of the exuberant T-Rex. That's kind of giving it a little bit more credit than it deserves. Exuberant. He was. Ex- I told. I told you earlier. He's. He was always fucking like jumping around and shit. You know what's interesting, Richard? So let's backtrack. You always make fun of my dare background. You know, like when I was in dare, like I was. It's like the one. I'm the one kid it worked on. And you know what? Even through the TV, when I saw this dinosaur jump around, I'm like, "There's a sick fuck somewhere in this." And you know what, Richard? Twenty some odd years later, you know what I just learned? What? I was right. You know what? You know what I think? I think I think you, sir, are being very close minded <laughs> because this this man is simply trying to release blocked energy and help women out. Not just women, help his goddesses out. Mm. And what are you doing? You're casting your judgy eyes I just am. because this is a man that's trying to fucking make a living. You're calling him a deviant. You're calling him a pervert. The next part of the story. The next part of the story is that he was arrested on October twenty seventh. What? No. Two thousand and sixteen. Whatever. Before I got into the Barney costume, he would pray and ask God to allow his loving divine spirit to flow through him and the costume, and let that draw the kids in. That energy would always draw them in, Joyner said. Children are more connected spiritually than adults, and a lot of times when I see infants and I'm out and about the grocery store or whatever, they start staring at me and I make the joke, you know who I am. And then the parents are like, get away! Yeah, no shit, please, They're like, call the police! You know me. We're close to a school, this guy's obviously got a record. You, Sammy. I'm the one that stares at you. You don't sound like Barney at all. Well, I didn't do the voice. I just, <laughs> I just was. He was just in the suit. <laughs> That's creepy. Like, Joyner says he also used his Tantra training to maintain his energy during long days on the set when he wore the hot, when he wore the hot 70 pound costume. Damn. That head probably had to be most of the weight. 70 pound costume he said that temps inside the inside the suit could reach 120 degrees so you're baking inside that really thing. i figured being on set it'd be decent well i guess all the lights and stuff i bet yeah, it warms you up all the, all the set lights and everything and you're in a big foam fucking suit yeah and you've got all that spiritual energy running through you it's like you know pro like it's like a computer you know all the stuff yeah. is going like you got to liquid cool that shit yeah you're running hot yeah you should ask god for some Better AC. <laughs> Fan inside. <laughs> Fan. <laughs> God, you know all that other stuff I asked for? Not like a li- not like a not like a fan fan, like a person fan, <laughs> like an actual fan. <laughs> I'm about you know, this is probably where it came from. Like he every episode he did, he had like a mini sweat lodge. Like he went on like a vision <laughs> quest every episode. <laughs> It's like goddamn peyote. Let's let let's time to let Barney out and he's fucking <laughs> wandering through the stage. I've been wandering the desert I for see 40, <laughs> for 47 years. Starts, starts hitting kids with a stick. All right, kids, off the set. We're done. Close set. Close set. Back, you foul bastards <laughs> of hell. <laughs> You see the size of that chicken? <laughs> Going on the vision quest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tantra also helped him maintain an abundance of joy during the process. For many, the for many in the West, the word. Tantra conjures up images of Sting engaging in seven-hour marathon sex sessions. The wrestler? Sting was big. I didn't know the wrestler was, like, really big into sex stuff. No, the singer. You know, Sting, the guy who goes, ow! No, he's all born again. Yeah. He is not in, no. The stinger. The stinger splash. penis. The scorpion deathlock. No. (laughs) He puts his penis in the scorpion deathlock because he hates himself. Who? Barney? Sting. The, no. the wrestler? Yeah. Does he really? 
Well, he's born again, so I'm sure like sex is dirty. Oh, is he born again? Yeah. A lot of wrestlers become born again. Yeah. We need to do a wrestling episode at some point, Richard. Why? I don't know, because I like wrestling now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know what? That'll be your baby. And you nurture that baby. <laughs> let's table that forever. <laughs> Richard, let's blow through that table. <laughs> uh but the practice has roots Wait, in both. So back to your other thing. So Sting was like a big. Le- I know Prince was like a big, like marathon sex guy. Sting is too. Like the singer. Yeah, Sting, Sting is too. Sting's all like. He, Sting's big on you know like he like holds his energy in and he's he he he's a lot like. Uh, did did you ever watch uh, American Pie two where there was the one kid that slept with Stifler's mom? Yeah. And then in the second movie, he was like, "Oh, I'm holding my and." you know, harnessing my sexual energy and I'm holding it in. And and then they had the marathon session. Yeah. Then he had the marathon session with Stifler's mom. I just don't know who has time for that. Like a seven hour marathon session one, like uh, sting does because he's sting. Mm. He can have a seven hour marathon session. He's like, okay, I'm going to go play music now. Yeah. I think that's just bull. I don't think it's true. I think he's making it up. I don't know, man. I don't think he's making it up. He's got he's got women that'll say like, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. He's like he's got tons of money too. He he goes and pays them three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> hey, right. say I tell them I tell them I lasted forever. The practice has roots in both Buddhism and Hinduism, going back thousands of years, and contains many facets. Ooh, weren't those the monks that like hung stuff to their wee wees to like like get like stronger? Um, maybe. I remember hearing I about know. that. That sounded horrible. I remember hearing about that, too. I remember seeing pictures. Yeah, they tie remember rocks to it and they chuck it yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. Like, penis is strong. Actually, they have to take a vow of silence. They're like, uh, Tantra is a spiritual science of consciousness. Its goal is to liberate us from the unconscious programming that keeps us from recognizing the divinity in ourselves and in all beings. You know what? It sh- you know what it is, Sean? It's the Force. This is how Jedi's have sex. This is Jedi sex. Jedi mind sex. With Medichlorians? Is that what happens? Yeah, Richard? that's exactly like. A, give me all the yeah. I'm going to hold, you're going to do seven hours and then you're going to get my midichlorians. Actually, you know what it is? It's more like they're space ghosts. You're the chosen one. And they're not there for their children. <laughs> like, well, I couldn't be there because I was doing Jedi things. And then they cut off their kids' hands. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty common thing. You know why? Because it's like, you will not touch your penis. <laughs> <laughs> no! You have to learn to hold it in. Hey, did you hear the... Um, George Lucas's idea for uh, his eight nine ten or seven eight nine. I think so, but go ahead and tell me. I just I got I was going to be like Medichlorian like battles. They're like going to go inside of like the Medichlorians, and those were going to be what the episodes were about. So like we're going to zoom in on like an old Luke, and we're going to see inside of his body. It was going to be like all the Medichlorians fighting each other, the good and evil. Yeah, like like like. Like that, like that episode of Magic School Bus yeah. with the Jedi's, but like the bad one, the the dark side is like the virus, and yeah. the light side is like the white cells, and they like grab them, <laughs> and like try to be like, and then the cav- and then the the cavity creeps show up, and yeah, it would have been horrible, but very educational. We make people kill kids. We because <laughs> Anakin killed all the kids. He and did. Like, he's like the cavity creeps, but it's like the, it's like the dark side creeps. And they're like, we make you kill kids. We make you kill kids. Then you shoot lightning. Then you <laughs> shoot lightning. He never got to shoot lightning. Isn't that sad? Yeah, it is kind of sad when you think about it. Anakin never got to shoot lightning. Yep. Cause he had no hands. Right. Well, even when he had the one hand, he couldn't. He didn't. He never shot lightning. Well, he wasn't fully bad yet. That's true. It's sad. It's sad. Potential. You missed. think he was mad about that? He was like, one time, I wish I could have just shot the lightning fucking once. Uh, you know, even if he did for a second, like then he probably thought about like, oh wait, I just killed a bunch of Jedi kids, yeah. and maybe felt a little bad about himself. Ah, uh, <laughs> Matthias Rose, who was a certified tantra educator. With the with the School of Tantra and founder of the Moksha Tantra Center in Seattle. Oh, 
I, if I had to guess, Seattle seems like the place. Classical Tantra included sexuality as one practice among many designed to help us expand our consciousness beyond the ordinary reality of the ego self. He adds, if there is corruption, it came about in the marketing of books, videos, and ultimately escort services that all began to use the word Tantra as shorthand for mindful sexuality. Yeah, but that's not something new. I mean, that's been going on for early times. Well, basically, yeah, he's just kind of saying like, you know, it meant this big thing and then somebody took a piece of it and it's like, hey, this has got sex in it. (laughs) And then they totally and then they marketed it and sold it. You know who I bet did that, Richard? A dude. (laughs) It was Barney (laughs) 2.0. It was Bob West. It was like, damn, Bob West. How Joyner speaks about Tantra today won't help clear up any confusion. He's the type of guy prone to spitting out a quote like this. When you go down on a woman, I don't know why, but in the, I think the, the article felt the need to put in parentheses orally. Instead of audibly. <laughs> what are you doing down there? Just listening. <laughs> Looking for the ocean. Oh, I can hear it. Uh, when you go down on woman, it should be just like you're saying grace, like blessing the food you're about to receive. No food in the world can compare to goddess nectar because spirit is involved. Before you taste the goddess nectar, give thanks and say grace. Richard, I would love women. I would love women to understand how powerful that energy is. Richard experiment. We'll say that to our wives tonight and see what happens. Yeah. I want to right before I go down on my wife, I want to be like, yubba dub dub. Thanks for the grub. (laughs) (laughs) Good food, good meat, good. (laughs) What are you doing down there? Okay, okay, we're done. We're done. Just just get dressed. Get get out. Get out. You're sleeping not even on the couch. Just go outside. You're go going outside. to Sean's house. I want you to leave. <laughs> Rub a dub dub. Thanks for the grub. Yay God. <sighs> Why do we have to take something so beautiful, Richard, and make it impure? <laughs> uh Connecting your mind, body, and spirit to... Okay, so this is his mission statement on his website. His mission statement reads, Connecting your mind, body, and spirit together as one in perfect harmony and achieving a higher and more blissful state of awareness to your sexuality and who you are as a spiritual being. Space, space, hashtag no fatties. <laughs> Wait a second. Um, For clients, this higher and more blissful state of awareness is often best achieved through penetrative, ideally unprotected sex. See this? According to Joyner. Yeah, this doesn't seem really like a spiritual thing as much. Well, I was going to say it's kind of impressive he could do that like twice in a day, but... I don't think that's really that impressive now. That He's I think not about doing it. it twice a day. He's doing it two to four times a week. Oh, I got you. This seems like a scam, Richard. I'm not going to lie. Well, uh, if it is, it's a beautiful scam. <laughs> He's like, hey, have you ever had sex with Barney? Not the voice. <laughs> the guy that wore the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the voice. I'm ju- I was just in the suit. You won't hear the voice. I promise. I promise. <laughs> like some chick shows up. Like, I really had a Barney thing going when I was in I, high I school. I wanted to hear the voice. Do you still have the suit? Can you wear the suit? <laughs> <laughs> just the head. Just wear the head. And the tail. Gotta have the tail. I cannot go down on you if I wear the head. Rub a dub dub. <laughs> Thanks for the grub. She's like, well, I'd, I'd be willing to let you give the college try. It's like, nom 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 nom. <laughs> I cannot put the fingers to you, for my arms are short <laughs> and cannot reach. Wait, why does he speak like he's Spanish? I don't know. I felt like it was because it reminds me of I had like that how to be a Latin lover. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, for clients, okay, no, I, he's okay. So this is, 
God, this dude is like, I feel like this dude is like, is, is trying to be like the smooth talking douchebag, but he's like trying to make it sound all beautiful and mysterious. Yeah. And apparently some women fucking buy it. You ready for this? Some women obviously pay for it. Some women, yeah, some women are paying 350 bucks for it. (laughs) I can't even get my wife to make dinner. (laughs) That's because she already has dinner, Sean. I don't get it. You just need to say grace before you eat it. (laughs) Okay, so according to Joyner, condoms, quote, block the energy. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, mm, yeah, they block his energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And he prefers not to use them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Joyner provides his STD test results to prospective clients. How is this legal? This is prostitution. Okay, but uh, uh, okay, it's, tell me this, Sean: is porn prostitution? Oh, so he videotapes it and puts it online. Maybe. Yeah, let that hang there. Hmm. I mean, if he does that, I mean, I guess if it's unwilling, unknowingly, I guess that might be illegal. He, Joiner provides his STD test to re, to prospective clients who were asked to disclose any STDs in a signed consent form prior to their first session. These methods, according to other tantra coaches, are highly unorthodox. So even in the world of tantra, they're like this dude, this fucking dude. So like the the sex is highly not like common. I think it's the way. I think it's. Might not necessarily be that. I think it's the fact that that is his main focus, and also like the way he goes about it. Okay. By saying you know condoms block energy and you know stuff like that. Uh, Kaya Kwan Yin, who is a tantra life coach with more than one hundred hours of training and a full time tantra business that sees her working primarily with male clients, hmm. she says she says that the idea that condoms could quote block energy sounds, according to her, shady and ridiculous. But having sex with clients is... Tantric sex can happen with your clothes on. What typically looks like penis and vagina penetration is often referred to as full union in contemporary practice. Or, as I called in high school, dry humping. (laughs) (laughs) Sexual energy penetrates clothes, condoms, countries, and beyond. Having sex with clients in the world of Tantra is more of an anomaly than the norm, according according to this other Tantra coach. This just sounds like a get laid scheme. Yeah, that's what's that's what's more sounding like. Um but Joyner very much believes in his practice. He says once the lingam is inside the yoni, there's a technique where you don't even move. <laughs> no wonder it lasts so long. No, no, wait, wait. The Ling Ling is waiting. The Ling Ling. And the Yanni. You're harmonizing spiritually and consciously as you're looking into each other's eyes and you're feeling each other's energy take place. <laughs> Richard, I just imagine that they, he's laying on top of this woman. Their eyes like are dead linked. staring in her eyes and she's lay, laying there like a dead fish. Like, yeah. uh, and he looks at her, he's like, you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're harmonizing spiritually and consciously as you're looking to each other's eyes. The energy. This is about energy moving up. This goes beyond the realm of the merely physical, says Joiner, and into the spiritual. A lot of women have never really had spiritual sex. No, I don't think they have. I would not. I would not want to engage in spiritual sex. Not the way he's selling it. Like it's taking something beautiful and making it super ass creepy. Like I'm all fine with a girl screaming, "Oh God, Jesus!" But. That's about as far as I go when it comes to bringing spirituality into my bedroom. Yeah. I don't really want to be. Let me hold this cross while I'm on top. No, no, I don't. I'm not down with that. This is Father Tom. What the hell is he doing here? He's making this spiritual. <laughs> He's blessing our union. I don't want to bless the union. Oh, take the Ling Ling and put it in the Lonnie. 
Are these Gregorian? Wait, did you bring Gregorian monks in here? <laughs> oh, he brought wafers. Thank God, I'm hungry. Oh, look, wine. <laughs> Take this for this is my body. Your body? Your, with, oh, now I'm confused <laughs> and creeped out. I disagree with this, says Rose, and Rose is the... Uh, Rose was the one that went that has the uh, the the educator at the Tantra Center. Uh-huh. So Rose strongly disagrees with with what Joyner's saying. He said she says I I can't say that there's never a place for intercourse. It's part of the tantric tool set, but in a client slash practitioner relationship, it's almost always never needed unless you pay the extra special price. <laughs> Particularly for healing purposes, Rose goes on to say that ener- that energetically, everything you can do for a client can be done with the hands. For aligning chakras, you don't even need to touch. Touch is necessary for releasing trauma the body holds, but that touch is best done with the hands because, quote, our heart energy is in our hands. Beyond that, there is risk to adding trauma when intercourse is involved. So she's saying, like, this fucker's just trying to sleep with people well, and get like. money for it. And then Joiner's like, fuck you, it works. Yeah. I still got what does he have? Thirty five clients? Uh I think they said I think he said thirty. Thirty. Um Kimberly Resnick Anderson, who's a sex therapist and professor of psychiatry at UCLA, says she's all for people luxuriating in their sexual experiences, but shares Rose's concerns about Joyner's practice of having intercourse with clients. Especially unprotected. She says even porn stars in California use a condom. It's the law. For him not to use condoms is medically unethical and irresponsible. He's like, screw you. I'm not a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't go to medical school. I went to put on a fucking Barney suit school. (laughs) And then I got my online degree for tantric sex educator. Yeah. Universal Life Church, bitches. (laughs) Joyner began his current practice in 2004 and finds clients any number of ways, from word of mouth to converting women he's already met on Tinder. He sees clients in their homes all over L.A., from Brentwood to Long Beach to deep in the valley and even out of state. His website contains goddess testimonials, each more breathless than the last, in their praise of Joyner and the benefits of sessions with him. Joyner says that before or during his initial consultation, if he feels they're not ready for or can't handle the spiritual experience or are simply looking for a physical release, he will not take them on. You know what that is? That's when they're like, wait a second, this sounds like prostitution. I'm calling the police. He's like, nope, your aura is all messed up. You're Yanni <laughs> Lana thingy with Bobber down there. Nope. I'm leaving. Hashtag no fatties. <laughs> uh, one client whose name is Lisa. Well, she's using a pseudonym. Lisa Turtle. Oh, this woman's 50. Okay. What does what, what, that matter? 50 not that old. No, it's Look not at that you. Old. You're like, oh, she's 50. I'm surprised she even knows what's going on down there. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I mean, it breaks after 45, right? Isn't that? I heard 40. Shrivels and, th- and you're closer um, to that than I am. God damn it. You're an ass. <laughs> Um, She said by phone that she found Joyner through Tinder. She had intercourse with him around the third session and described it as a spiritual awakening. She's now been a client for three years, and she says it took her a few sessions before she was comfortable enough to have intercourse. It wasn't as if I felt like I had to have a full session to get there, but then again, it was like, maybe I do. She says, Lisa has also occasionally insisted the joiner wear a condom when they have sex. Mm, again, this sounds just super sketchy. Another client whose name is Indigo, who is 53, works as a nurse. She spends her life caring for others. She told she told the reporter by phone and considers her sessions with Joyner time to focus on herself. I didn't go all the way the first time because he could feel my hesitation. But after the first, first few sessions, I really started to let go. Mm. 
Richard, this is feeling more and more skeezy as you're getting down through it. <laughs> uh, none of the three clients provided through Joiner said they felt pressured or coerced into sex and denies anything of the sort. Joiner has no claims filed against him for sexual harassment or coercion by the Los Angeles Police Department. So is this something like he does, like technically he's doing this off the clock? So they're paying him for everything else but the sex? Like an escort service kind of thing? I, I, I guess. Like, I guess. Isn't that how escort services work? It's like, well, they don't pay us for the sex. So they pay us for the company, which sometimes results in knocking boots. Uh, in the state of California, massage with the intent of causing arousal is considered solicitation. To protect himself, Joyner says he had a police officer friend help him write a contract that he has all the potential clients sign during the consultation process, stating that they're not law enforcement or part of a sting operation. He says that the first session is free, and without money exchanged, the session is legal consent. This, he contends, is his legal loophole. So his legal loophole to be a gigolo. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, first I make him, you're not a cop, right? You have to tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> otherwise, it's entrapment. You got to tell me if you're a cop, or otherwise, it's, it's entrapment. It's like, that's not true. That's not how it works. Oh, it's what a cop would say. Hashtag no fatties. <laughs> no fatty cops. <laughs> According to California defense attorney Jonathan Kelman, the fact that Joyner charges for subsequent sessions means that means if a client of Joyner's happened to complain to authorities, he could be charged with prostitution. If said session did indeed include intercourse or massage with the intent of causing arousal, you can't legally have sex with someone in exchange for money. If I have a client who gets arrested for exchanging a Big Mac for sex, that's by definition prostitution. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this still, Richard. So basically he's saying like, yeah, the dude's acting like a fucking gigolo. He is. I mean, that's essentially what he's doing. And and the then but he's saying that this contract that he that he's written up helps him get around it, but then this defense attorney's like, really he just like all he needs to do is just piss somebody off and then they complain. Get caught. Oh Richard, this is gonna be like a thirty five woman and man love triangle. Like one of these ladies or a couple of them are gonna fall in love with Barney and then <laughs> He's not going to come calling because he's like, I'm booked, Samantha. I can't come over. Sorry. He discovered tantra and spiritual sexuality in the 1980s at age 20 while training in Swedish massage, which he took up as a way to make extra money while at ITT Tech. Yeah, and he's like, guess what? I only massaged women. <laughs> he began connecting the two when while practicing massage on the side of his main gig. Clients began telling him... His touch aroused them. Uh, He's like, you have magic fingers. He's like, I know where to do with these. <laughs> Jam them in your butt. Oh, <laughs> you're a goddess. <laughs> Richard, so just my closing thoughts on all this. I think yeah, that my. Yeah, I'd love to hear your closing my thoughts. My instincts, this. I think, are correct. Like, again, back in the day, I saw this dude coming out in a Barney outfit waving his hands around his aura his energy like was ringing all kind of warning bells for little sean <laughs> and your story just proved me right that that dude is a creepy mofo yeah a bit a bit more creepier than uh than originally thought like i originally i was honestly like when i first was going in i was like oh this dude's you know like he was doing this thing he was you know on the show or whatever and now he's you know trying to help you know Maybe do like maybe help couples, you know, find their special. Yeah, that's you know, what find I was like thinking. A special connection. Nope, nope. This is a dude that's just sleeping with a bunch of chicks and getting paid for it. So I mean, while I'm like, oh, this is horrible. The other part of me is like, motherfucker. How do I enroll in that university, Amanda? I found my calling. I want to be a guru. I've got a beard. <laughs> and then tonight you're like, good meat, good food, good meat, good guy. Let's eat. 
<laughs> That's what's going to happen. All right. Well, Richard, do you have any additional Richard's closing thoughts as we tidy up this uh, episode? I'm going to get punched in the face tonight. <laughs> Other than that, that's all I got. All right, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website, we're at languageofbroance.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbroance.com. Check out the LLB Army Intelligence Reports as we just added a new Twitch stream. It's www.twitch.tv slash dutchmasters99. Like us on Facebook. Remember, word of mouth is huge for getting our podcast to New Year's, so go out, tell anybody you can, share, like, everything you can think of to help push our podcast to more listeners. Uh, and you can also do that by recruiting them for the LB Army by getting someone you know to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And while you're there, be sure to leave a rating and a review because those ratings are so super, super helpful. And they get us, you know, in rankings and iTunes help there. They help in all the places that they that we need help. And you can also check us as part of the podcasting love gurus at the Pod Bros Network. Yes, the the tantric podcast masters. And if you want to join our LB Army, like our LB Army member Wendy, go to our Patreon accounts, www.patreon.com slash language of a bromance. We've we've helped her find her spiritual center. <laughs> all right. Well, is there anything else before I close her out? Nope. I'm going to get punched in the face tonight. All right. Well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we yabba dabba dub. Thanks for the <laughs> Eat the beaver. Yeah. And before you eat the beaver, make sure you say a prayer.